So you're thinking about moving to Quincy, Massachusetts, but you aren't quite sure about the neighborhoods and where they're located. What are a couple pros and cons of some of the different neighborhoods? In this video, we're going to answer those exact questions and we're going to open up Google Maps and I'm going to walk you through a Google Map tour. It's almost like a walking tour of Quincy, if you will. So that way you can get a better feel for Quincy and why the city is so awesome. By doing this, you'll have a good idea of what's happening and where things are located. So when you do decide to visit Quincy, then you will have a great familiarity of the different areas and what Quincy has to offer. This way you can focus on the areas you are most interested in and both well, houses that you want to see. Real quick, my name's Jeff Chubb and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent and I've sold more than a thousand houses. We get calls, emails, texts from folks just like you who are looking to make a move in the Boston metro market and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next 9 or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us an email or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about the proximity of Quincy. So we got Quincy, right, call it right about here. So the first thing to point out really is its proximity to Boston. It does border uh, Dorchester, which is a neighborhood in Boston right here, but it's very easy to jump in. You got Milton, you got Braintree, and you got Weymouth right here that are circling Quincy, if you will. Now, obviously, you got big... <laughs> Big, big thing of water right here. So Quincy Bay, which uh, dumps right out into the Atlantic Ocean. So so with Quincy, you got the commute into Boston. So you got a couple ways. So first off is you got 93, which comes up right through here and will drop you into Boston, right? That's a main thoroughway, one of our main roads that goes into Boston. So a lot of Quincy residents will come right about here and dump onto Neponset, which is right here. And then you got Granite Ave, which... Quincy residents will dump on and jump on the right here. Quite frankly, though, it's not just Quincy residents. So there is a decent amount of traffic there during rush hour because you have all of these communities that come along 3A and come in through and just drive through Quincy and then are dumping in and feeding in through the deposit bridge or this Granite Avenue area. Then you got the red line, which kind of comes like this, basically. So this is going to be another way to get into Boston and just take you straight in. It's it's the red line. So that's going to have a bunch of stops and then come to South Station and then uh, actually goes up and continues through through Cambridge. And then you also have the commuter rail, which takes you on the same line. The only stop in Quincy for the commuter rail is Quincy Center. Uh, as where you have four different stops for the red line uh, T stop. So if if you're if you're in Quincy Center and you're looking for a lot faster and more efficient way to get into the city rather than having to stop multiple times, then ultimately this uh, Quincy Center uh, stop and just jumping on the commuter rail is probably going to be for you. So let's start talking about the neighborhoods, and we'll start at Marina Bay and then work our way down. This is Marina Bay right here. Some people will make the wrong assumption and throw Squanum as part of Marina Bay into that neighborhood it is not they are two separate neighborhoods the marina bay actually used to be an old navy air base and private airport and then in the 1950s property was sold to boston edison and it was developed to what we know as today basically back in 1985 so one of the things about marina bay is as you can see it is pretty darn close if you were driving you come out here and basically go across on the ponds and it can jump on into 93. the other thing is is there is a boat that will take you out into uh, boston as well that's probably the fun most fun way to go about it but it's really now ultimately a thriving neighborhood interesting fact there are no single family homes in there it's all condos townhouses the hip is just planned that way so you have the marina right here basically and in the marina you have a lot of really awesome restaurants yeah like real house chantley victory point or uh, 305 or just to name a few they also have a really nice cute little boardwalk to walk which is really enjoyable just absolutely stunning and amazing views of boston like i said the commute if you live here then the commute is is nice and easy as you can either go this way or if you're driving you're coming this way if you're going to the if you're planning on utilizing the train to the red line that's probably going to be a little bit more of a pain but you do have bus service that will come and pick you up throughout the neighborhood but it's a really really beautiful beautiful neighborhood and and they have some large condo buildings that are right here on the water i mean just the views are absolutely spectacular so then squanum 
This is going to be Squanum right here. It's Peninsula that's surrounded by the water. It used to actually be a summer town, which kind of explains a lot of the housing stock that you have there. But this was the summer town that actually supported the old Navy air base. And you have a lot of that here as well, not only summer town, but also just residents who uh, lived and worked at the uh, old Navy air base, lived here, and, and now it's their commute. Talk about an awesome commute back in the day. So the housing stock mostly consists of single family, smaller bungalows. I mean, and these guys have just some absolutely stunning views. I mean, it's a peninsula, so there's a lot of water. And what makes it so awesome is, is well, Marina Bay is nice and flat. Again, airport, Squanum is not. It's building up on a hill. So if, even if you live up here, you're going to have some absolutely amazing, stunning views looking out. So really offers some residents some just great, great, great location. So residents in Squatum, like I said, awesome uh, water views. They also have two beaches. So you got Orchard Beach and you got Nickerson Beach right here that residents love. You got a couple of, you know, little parks. Um, this is all marshes. So I don't think you're doing much there. In regards to commuting, residents could come over here, pop out here and take the ferry in if they wanted to. Driving wise, it's going to be very similar in regards to Marina Bay as they just come out here and, and jump over it through the ponds it right down there. Again, if they wanted to take the rail, then it's kind of a pain. Probably most likely the best thing to do would be taking bus to the rail lines and getting to Boston that way. All right, let's talk North Quincy. So as you can see here, we got a highlighted right here. This is North Quincy. This is probably one of the most convenient neighborhoods for commutes when it comes to Boston out of pretty much anywhere. As I uh, mentioned before, and this is actually Boston right here. This is Dorchester. So it's just separated by this river right here. For North Quincy, like I said, we used to be a neighborhood that actually supported Marina Bay. It, it abuts Wallston Beach. So this is all Wallston Beach right here. Really great beach. Probably one of the things that Quincy is really well known for. You're going to find a mixture of single family, multi family, and condos properties in here that are the two to three family type condos, not the big, huge 100 or 200 unit condo buildings. It's not a very vertical section of town, if you will. It also is home to one of the two high schools that Quincy has. So that's going to be North Quincy High School. Community Boston, like I said, it's really, really, really simple. Most people are going to go up through the ponds that if they're driving, they could jump on the Red Line T stop. There's some bus lines. So there's there's a, a lot of different ways they could also come up here if they wanted to go jump into uh, Marina Bay and take the ferry in. Like I said, definitely one of the more convenient neighborhoods in Quincy. So this is going to be a lost, and, and one of the first things I want to say is the uh, definition of the neighborhood is going to change depending on who you're talking to. For example, Google here, boy, what a weird way to say it. That is not what most people think of Wallace. And I can say it this way, it kind of generally is in, in this area, if you will. Some people will have it coming out into the water line here because you got North Quincy up there. But I think most would say that Wallston really consists of two smaller neighborhoods. You got Wallston Heights and really Wallston Park. Primarily, it's a neighborhood that is is known for its tree-lined streets, historic homes, and, and really gives you that suburban feel. It's similar to the homes up here in North Quincy. You're going to find single-family homes, condos, and then the multifamilies that are in like the two to three you know family properties. This area was really built the same time that this, this area was, hence why they're going to be very similar feeling in regards to, to the neighborhood aspect. Commute to Boston, probably the best thing for, for a lot of people is going to be the Wallston T-Stop, which should be somewhere about here. You know, otherwise they could uh, come up here through 3A and dump you into Boston, or probably some people might jump over here to the Granite Ave option right here to jump you in 93. So, you know, again, a very accessible and a very convenient neighborhood to live in. Now let's talk about Montclair. I feel like Montclair's forgotten about a lot. This is the Montclair neighborhood, approximately, I should say. Also, one of Quincy's most convenient neighborhoods, probably one of the more convenient neighborhoods in the Boston Metro Market. It's easy because a lot of residents are going to utilize this North Quincy rail stop. They could also jump through Neponset by kind of jumping off of this way on 93, or they could take Granite Ave entrance onto 93. There's a lot of accessible points here. You got some bus lines, but a really all-around convenient neighborhood. Another thing to mention is the President's Golf Course. Right? That uh, residents of all of Quincy and well, really all around are going to enjoy. But uh, President's Golf Course, you, get, you have some really nice neighborhoods that kind of border the President's Golf Course. 
And you can get some nice views in some of those houses. It's just a quaint, nice little Boston suburb area neighborhood to live in, that's for sure. All right, so now let's talk about Howl's Neck. We're going to go from Montclair all the way over here to Howl's Neck right here. And that's Howl's Neck, not Hughes Neck. It is pronounced wrongfully so, Howl's Neck. So again, what makes House Next so great, like so much of Quincy, you got a lot of water. It is a peninsula, so you got a lot of water, which gives you some great water views. Just jets right out there to Quincy Bay. So, I mean, it's just, it's fantastic area. It's mostly a residential neighborhood. There are a few restaurants here or there, but there, you're not going to find any big commercial buildings or anything like that. It's it's a Boston suburb at its best. For beaches, we got Perry Beach right here. We got Manhattan Beach right here. You're going to have Edgewater Beach, which should be somewhere about right here. You got Brenham Playground right here. You got Real Field right here. You have the pier up here, which is awesome for fishing. That's another island and, and it's pier. You got Quincy Yacht Club right here, which is fantastic for, for us boaters. We absolutely love it. House Neck, it's, it's a great secluded area. Now, if you're living in House Neck, it isn't the most convenient place to live there are no ferries or anything like that there are some bus routes but mainly it's driving when it comes to commuting like i said most likely driving you're going to be jumping out here through adam shore which we're going to talk about set in a couple seconds through quincy shore drive come up to there through wallston and then north quincy and then jump out here and then jump through the ponds at bridge and boom you're on 93. I did mention uh, earlier there are some bus routes, but if you're on bus routes, they're going to be doing the same traffic. Otherwise, you can maybe do some bus routes, come over here and jump to the Quincy Center, Redline, or Commuter Rest Stop. Those are probably your your best options. So we talked about Adam Sure, a couple seconds ago. Like we said, we got Hal's Neck right here. This is going to lead us up to North Quincy right there. Quincy Center is going to be over there. That, that talk's coming up soon. So this is actually the situated on land of the former Adams family, hence the name of the neighborhood, right? Makes sense, right? Adams? Sure. Primarily residential neighborhood. Single family homes were primarily built between 1940s through 1970s. You got, it's relatively close to parks. You got a little bit more waterfront here, beaches and marinas. So you got Perkins Park and Marymount Elementary School right here. You got Broad Meadows Middle School right here. So that's in close um, walking distance. You got Clipper Marina right here. You know, so the right there, so Keep in mind, C Street, this is more of a main road, so you are going to get all the traffic that's dumping out of Howl's Neck right here, but from a commuting perspective, it is a little bit closer. Again, it is going to be a more convenient neighborhood. You can just jump out here to C Street and jump up through here on Quincy Shore Drive that takes you to the Neponset. Otherwise, you're going to take bus more drive over here to Quincy Center and jump on the Red Line T-Stop. So, Again, very convenient neighborhood, great spot to live, offers you some nice water views. You got some nice parks you're close to not only the elementary school as well as the middle school, but you're also really proximate, close to proximity over here where the high school, North Quincy High School is as well. So this is Quincy Center. If somebody was to refer to downtown, I guess this is what they would be talking about. However, nobody calls it downtown. It is home to the Quincy Center T-Stop. So we've talked about it a couple of times. That's where the red line as well as the commuter line uh, goes. Very convenient. Very, very, very convenient for, for residents that are looking to commute into the city. You have Quincy College right here. They have a couple of buildings throughout. United First Parish is a really kind of a famous spot. You got Quincy City Hall. You have the cemetery right here. The Hancock Cemetery. You know, the Thomas Crane Public Library right here. So like I said, this is just like the quote unquote downtown of Quincy this is where it's going to feel most city for you. And to that point, you are going to find a couple large rental apartment buildings. You'll find a couple large condo sale buildings in uh, close proximity of this area. It's definitely more dense and definitely city-like. If, if you can have to say that, it's hard to say that from a if you're thinking like New York type city, most of Quincy is, is it's a little bit more spread out. It's, it's single family or the condo homes that are in old two to three family properties. And also just for what it is, you know, for the downtown and the Washington street, and you got Hancock street, you're going to find a bunch of small cafes and restaurants and bars and things of that nature. It, it's, it's a convenient, convenient neighborhood to live in. It really, truly offers you kind of a best of both worlds type situation. And so next up is going to be Marymount. Marymount is a neighborhood that's between Quincy Center, which we talked about just right in here. I'm in Adam Shore, which is right over here. So it's kind of this area, right? About here, call it. 
So it is primarily a residential neighborhood. And one of the reasons why is, is the Adams family actually owned this land up to the early 20th century. And then at what point they sold off the properties to make for, for housing lots, single family housing lots. So that's why so much of it is, is residential single families and, and ultimately why there isn't much commercial or industrial or no industrial in, in this neighborhood. Housing style ranges from colonial and Cape style houses to ranch homes and bungalows. So that's pretty much what we see all throughout Quincy neighborhood. It's served by the Marymount Elementary School, which is up here. Kids go to the high school, which should be right about, right about there. So it's a really convenient location also from an aspect of commuting in to the city. Again, we could go this way or we could jump out this way to C Street and go up Quincy Shore Drive that way. Also, if you got bus routes that run throughout here and nice, easy walking distance to the Quincy Center T-stop where you could jump on the red line as well as the commuter rail. So really all around this, this neighborhood offers people a lot of the best of both worlds. Other mentions are the Quincy Youth Arena. We've got Ginger Betty's, which if you haven't heard of Ginger Betty's, come around Christmas time, you can definitely find my wife there at least once. And then you got Marymount Beach, which is up here that a bunch of residents will use. So like I said, it's a very, very, very convenient neighborhood to be in. Second to last, we got Quincy Point here. Now, look, this neighborhood encompasses everything east of Quincy Center and goes all the way over to Weymouth right over here. I feel like it often gets lost in the shovel, but the town is home to more than 10,000 people. So it's under the former Four River Shipyard, which is going to be right about there. Pretty cool. Based there is they, it is still the United States Naval Shipbuilding Museum, and they got an old carrier there, which is kind of pretty awesome to drive by pretty much every single day. You got a lot of small beaches. You got Mount Beach, and you got Avalon Beach right here, which are pretty awesome. You got the Four River Field, which is going to be right about there. Big, huge, huge, huge park. Marshall Elementary School is right here. You got Point Webster, the uh, middle school as well services the neighborhood. And then, you know, it's pretty darn close to the Quincy High School, which is right there as well. So pretty good and easy, convenient feeding pattern. You got, this is the Four River Bridge that takes you over into Weymouth right here. Again, for residents, they were commuting in. They're going to take Washington Street up through either jump on Granite Avenue to 93 or go through the Deposit Bridge, or they could jump on the red line as well, or the commuter rail at the Quincy Center T-stop as well. Last but not least is Quincy Center. It's located in the southern part of Quincy. Quincy Center is the west and north of South Quincy. You got Quincy Point to the east over here. Then you got Braintree to the south and 93, which is going to be right here, is on the west. You got a seven and a half acre park right here. That's track and field facility, football practice field, children's play equipment, five tennis court, baseball, softball field. So that's pretty awesome. Commuting is pretty easy because you got the red line that jumps up through here. Most people are either going to use the Quincy Adams stop or maybe jump up here to the Quincy Center stop it's very easy on the red line easy access to 93 coming down through here there's a couple other points like off of Furnacebrook parkway which should be somewhere around here i should know that because that's where my office is located just bump back this is john adams birthplace right here so yeah that that's south quincy and another really convenient awesome place to live again the housing stock is mostly going to be residential like single family uh, smaller multifamily properties. You do have a little bit more commercial down in this space. You'll have some big commercial buildings. I think they got like a Home Depot down there. So it, it is definitely convenient, but it's definitely not as secluded as say a house neck. And it and it doesn't offer the views of other parts of Quincy because as you can see, there is no water mass anywhere around us. This is definitely more of a landlocked part uh, neighborhood of Quincy. But like I said, what you do get is you get a lot of convenience. As you can see, Quincy has a lot to offer. No matter what feel that you're looking for, then Quincy has it. Maybe it's the city feel in a big building that's close to the subway lines that you're looking for. Well, then that Quincy Center has got you covered. Maybe it's the suburb feel with the white picket fence that you're looking for. Well, then a lot of neighborhoods like South or North Quincy have you covered. Maybe it's a condo on the water. Then you have to check out Marina Bay. The point is, Quincy is awesome and offers a lot to people that are lucky enough to call it home. We're here to help. If you're wanting to know more information or maybe even want to look at some houses that are available in Quincy, then do me a favor. Reach out to us. Give us a call. 
shoot us an email or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com, fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. You can find a link below for all the Quincy Homes for Sale, as well as all of our contact information in the description below. Until next time.